Having read the title of this video, I bet I know what you're thinking. This is going to be something to do with Call of Duty Zombie Mode. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint a few of you. As much as I'd love to spend an age ranting on and on about how World at War Zombie Mode still reigns supreme some 14 years post-release, what I actually want to talk about is the level Aftermath from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Aftermath is one of the greatest missions to ever appear in the series, and is also, for me at least, by far its scariest. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with it to at least some degree given just how staggeringly successful Call of Duty 4 was, but for those of you who aren't, allow me to explain what happens in the simplest of terms. Following a devastating nuclear explosion which causes the helicopter he was travelling in to crash, you are placed in the shoes of American soldier Sergeant Paul Jackson and are given a few brief moments to survey the horrors he's surrounded by from a first-person perspective before he sadly passes away. And that's it, that's the entire synopsis. This technique of throwing in brief scenes which are perhaps more contemplative in nature is one used to great effect multiple times during modern warfare. The coup, the final level of the game's prologue, garnered both a huge amount of attention and praise back when Call of Duty 4 released for doing similar. You witness events through the eyes of Saudi Arabian President Yasser al-Falani as he's driven against his will through a city while a coup against his government takes place around him. Not long after, he is taken from the car, dragged into a courtyard and promptly executed. As a gun is pointed directly in your face before the trigger is pulled, it's hard not to wince. You are given even less control in the coup than during Aftermath, all you're able to really do is look around, but their setup is similar enough, as are the emotions they elicit, that they feel very much like they're cut from the same cloth. Aftermath, however, is by far the more memorable of the pair. That's to take nothing away from the coup, it is without doubt a very unique experience in its own right, but Aftermath is one of the most wonderfully bleak moments I've encountered not just in a Call of Duty title, but in any video game full stop. There are two reasons why it works so well. The first is because of its context within Call of Duty 4's campaign. During the game's first act, you spend half your time with the SAS playing as Soap McTavish, and the other with the US Marines controlling the aforementioned Sergeant Jackson. The SAS's side of the act isn't overly relevant here, but the US Marines certainly is. Throughout any level featuring them, you are frequently tasked with battling overwhelming odds against a rock and roll soundtrack, and while you may feel some trepidation at times, there's never any real doubt about whether or not you'll eventually emerge victorious. Infinity Ward works extremely hard to ensure you never suspect that the unmitigated disaster in your midst will soon occur, and that's something especially true of the mission which precedes Aftermath, Shock and Awe. Its opening, you racing through the skies as part of a fleet of helicopters, mirrors the beginning of earlier level Charlie Don't Surf, which ended up being quite the successful outing for Sergeant Jackson and co. There is also radio chatter towards Shock and Awe's end, which says explicitly that rescuing a downed pilot means that the group will not be in a safe area should a nuke detonate. A warning which is treated with a certain amount of bravado and almost waved away. There is of course also a lot of bravery in the soldier's response, but it's clear that no one truly believes the worst will actually happen, a view I'd wager was shared by many playing Modern Warfare 2. Before Shock and Awe concludes, you do eventually rescue the pilot in question as well. Everything is going brilliantly, before the worst does in fact happen. All U.S. forces be advised. We have a confirmed nuclear threat in the city. Test teams are on site and attempting to disarm. I repeat. Everyone, hey! Slowly but surely, over Modern Warfare's first act, Infinity Ward builds you up to feel near invincible, before pulling the rug out from under you in the most brutal of fashions. Aftermath is an incredibly visceral affair to begin with, made even more so by how well events leading up to it are handled. 
The second reason Aftermath works as well as it does is down to its content, and that is why I've coined it Call of Duty's scariest level. To be frank, Aftermath is absolutely horrifying. You awaken to the sound of garbled radio messages and ash swirling in the air around you, after which you're forced to crawl your way out of the wreckage of a helicopter which mere moments prior was your safe haven. There's no ambiguity surrounding what awaits you outside the wreckage, you witnessed what happened minutes earlier firsthand, but the sense of morbid anticipation is palpable nonetheless. I'd go so far as to say the whole opening is excruciating. Once outside, no additional complexity is added. Aftermath features no objectives of any kind, nor is there really ever anything required of you during its three minute or so runtime. No bad guys appear for you to fire endless streams of bullets at. There are no bombastic military set pieces we've become accustomed, if not desensitized to. In stark contrast to much of the rest of the campaign, there's not even any music, just a few diegetic sounds, the most prominent of which are the gusts of a very unnatural wind. <sighs> Developer Infinity Ward simply asks that you go for the briefest of first-person strolls through what I would personally describe as hell. You can crawl, you can stand up and limp, you can even try jumping, which will result in you falling back to the ground, but the result will always be the same. No matter what you do, death is inevitable. There's an interesting and no less unsettling detail contained within the surrounding area as well. If you head in the direction of the playground, you can hear children's voices. And the same can also be heard while you explore Pripyat towards the end of All Gillied Up, another city ravaged in its own way by the nuclear age. I'm not sure anything definitive has been said on the subject, but my personal interpretation is that Infinity Ward uses the effect to drive home the idea that everyone, young and old alike, is affected by disasters such as the two I've just discussed. Whether it's a somewhat cheap trick is up for debate, I think, and I'm not convinced the message behind it is particularly deep, but I thought it was worth mentioning regardless. I should also touch briefly on the rendition of the level included in the remastered version of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, released in 2016. Its core is very much the same, but with some noticeable changes. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Aftermath looks better than ever thanks to the expected massive graphical upgrade, and some new details have been added, such as buildings falling and fellow soldiers passing away. Those soldiers' deaths do feel needlessly gratuitous given how impactful the scene was to begin with. But it does make sense that the area would be more crowded than it is in the original, especially considering the long list of deceased who are listed during the mission's briefing. Also, the fact that one of them expires pulling what can only be described as gaming's most depressing T-pose has made me chuckle once or twice. I'm not sure if that makes me a bad person. A lot of what I've talked about during this video probably sounds like old hat in the present, and it is. First person sequences containing little or no action like Aftermath are featured in shooters all the time nowadays, and as hardware has continued to increase in power, so has their spectacle. But they weren't very common when Modern Warfare released back in 2007, and they certainly didn't share the macabre cinematic qualities of Aftermath. It and similar sequences in Call of Duty 4 had a polished realism to them which was quite unlike anything else on the market at the time, and with the event depicted during the level being one which is for many a very real fear, the idea of nuclear weapons even existing is enough to give me the willies, what you ended up with is an experience which was way ahead of its time and extremely disturbing in equal measure. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and soldiers. If you liked what you saw, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know your thoughts, and hopefully I'll catch you all again soon.